welcome to the Pearls and Polish podcast. My name is Rachel and I'm coming to you from just outside Sacramento, California. This is my channel where I talk about knitting, um, books, movies, and just the little things that we're up to. So welcome. If you're a new viewer, thank you for joining us. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. So episode 20, um, first off, you'll notice a little different background than what we usually do. Um, we live with my in-laws uh, while my husband is in school and working. Um, so uh, they have just come back from an extended trip. So there's a lot of people in our house um, and all the open spaces that have lots of nice light usually have people in them. So we're actually at my parents' house today. So I'm on the floor in front of a window. Um, it's fine. It's gonna be a little different than what we're used to, but that's okay. Um, that with that being said, um, I don't have all of the projects I'm going to talk about with me, but I am going to throw up some pictures, um, so you can see what I'm talking about. So there was no wrap up of March, beginning of April video. Um, I recorded one, but we left for San Diego the following day. So there was just no way I was going to be able to edit it and upload it. Um, and be ready for our super early flight. So it just didn't happen and that's okay. We need to be flexible with life. So this is gonna be kind of a combination of wrap up of March, April goals and mid April. So a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get to it. First off, things that I have finished. Um, so I have my notes, I'll show you my pretty notebook. Um, I don't know how much that's gonna blow out, but um, I take all my notes before I do an episode of all the finished objects, all my works in progress, what books I've been reading, the shows I've been watching, any other little news that I need to update y'all with. Um, so I wrote this all out yesterday afternoon. Um, I was hoping to record an episode yesterday, just got too busy, didn't get to it, hence recording it today. So already some of this stuff has changed. So that's how life is. So the first thing I'm going to pop up here is my last pair of socks for the easy peasy scrappy sock knit along hosted by everything she says. Um, it wrapped up at the end of March and I got these done March 20th. So lots of time uh, within that deadline. Um, so these were all scraps from different, I think they're mostly sock projects um, or a couple shawl projects were in there as well. Um, so these were all scraps from projects that I had already completed. So I tried not to use colors in the same order for both socks, um, which is a bit of a push for me, but you know, that's okay. Um, and I'm really happy with how they turned out. I love how mixed the colors are, but they still look very coherent. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to wear these. So that's my first finished optics. Next were my Mermaid Avenue socks. So these were the March socks. And of course these are Paisley Knits uh, Yarn Club for the Gods. And I talked about this last episode. These were a bit of a struggle for me. Um, I love the colorway. I love the pattern, but for some reason I just really struggled with just getting them done. Um, I don't know why. It, it wasn't particularly hard, um, but yeah. It was sometimes with some projects you just kind of drag through it. But Got those done on the 27th, so still within my March deadline. Uh, next were my tarnished socks. So if you follow me on Instagram, uh, which the link to that is on my website in the description below, along with all the makers and dyers that I mentioned in today's episode. Um, so I just needed like a plain vanilla sock to work on. Um, I didn't want anything fancy. I didn't want any sort of texture or cables or any of that. I just wanted a pair of socks that I could just work on. So on Instagram, I rolled my D&D &D dice and uh, went through my little fancy red notebook here. And the number that came up was for this pair of socks. So. This is Tarnished by Hickory Lane, uh, which you guys know I love Lisa. Um, I love her colors. I don't know when she dyed this colorway. This was actually given to me as a Christmas gift um, by Gwen of um, 
Bella Filato. I think that's how you say it. I'm not really sure. Anyways, Gwen gave this to me for Christmas last year. Um, so I was really excited that I got to knit these up. Um, I am really glad I went with a vanilla sock with just how much variation there is in the colors of the yarn. Um, you've got a lot going on there, uh, which is beautiful and which I love, but that does kind of change how you pick uh, your pattern. So with a very just, I don't know if I want to use the word busy, but with just a lot going on in the dye of the yarn, um, I gravitate more towards like a vanilla sock or a ribbed sock, something that's not going to have a ton as far as texture. For something that's either a tonal or just very low contrast um, colors, then I'd go for something with high texture. Or in the case of my mermaid socks, um, I had a high contrast, um, so I went with both high contrast and high texture so that they would both pop. So for these, I went with vanilla sock, heel flap, um, and just so that the yarn colors could really shine. So really happy with how those turned out. Um, those were finished April 3rd. So I took those with me to San Diego and I was able to finish them while I was there, which was great. So um, the last thing, which were not in my notes, uh, this was actually as a whip, a work in progress and they actually got turned into a finished object last night were my April socks. Um, so the April colorway for Yarn Club of the Gods was Demeter, uh, which I really love this colorway. I wasn't all that sure how it was going to turn out um, just because you've got the greens and the pinks, um, you've got some whites in there, some purples. Um, so I was a little hesitant on which pattern to pick because it does have a lot of color, um, but they are kind of blended well. So I went with um, the DRK Everyday Socks. So it's a design by um, Andrea Maori that came out a couple years ago, and it's a toe up sock. So you cast on your toe, you work the entire foot, then you do the heel and then you move up to the cuff and bind off. Um, so I've done this pattern before. I did it for last year's October socks. And what makes this pattern really fun is that it's a ribbed pattern. So the top of the foot is ribbed, which is typical, but the bottom of the foot is also ribbed. So it gives you a lot of stretch. Um, and then the whole leg is ribbed as typical. So it's a two by two rib. So even though it looks super teeny, it does stretch out quite a bit. Um, and then also the heel construction. This is a flegal heel um, sock. So what that means is you knit the foot and then you do all of your increases on the back side of the, the foot. And then you do kind of like a short row heel and then you keep going up with the leg. So really liked how they fit with the pair I did in October. So I really wanted to do that again which would let the colors of the yarn really shine through. So again, high contrast yarn, lots going on. So I went with a um, more low key pattern so that the focus could be on the yarn and nothing would get lost in between there. So those are my finished objects. My work's in progress. Um, so I cast on my sister's Musselburg hat um, when I saw her in February, I took one of my muscle books with me. She really liked it. She wanted one. So I already had yarn uh, for a project for her. So it's this beautiful green, which now that I'm working it up, I kind of want to keep it for myself. Um, but of course I bought it for her and I'm making it for her. So um, I can't keep that, but I'll make myself one, another one. Um, so I am 10 inches in. I need eight more inches. And then I cast, you know, start decreasing and then I cast off. So um, this is going to be kind of my take along project for the rest of the month. Um, I'm not going to cast on another pair of socks and I'll tell you why in just a second. Um, but yeah, this is a very low key, don't have to think all that hard um, project, which for something like meetings or um, I knit in church just to keep my hands busy or if I'm watching a show with my kids, it's something I don't have to really focus on. Um, 
I have gotten pretty good at knitting without looking at my hands. Um, so it's something I can just feel and not have to think about purling or knitting or cables. Um, I just keep knitting in a circle until I'm done. So really happy with how this is turning out. Um, loving all the colors and the pops of bronze that are coming through. Um, so I'm be really excited to finish this up and give this to my sister. So on here I have the um, my April socks, which like I said, are now finished. So don't need to talk about those, but I will talk about a sweater that I just cast on this morning. So again, Instagram stories. Um, I did ask for y'all's help to help me pick out the colorway for um, this sweater I was casting on. So Marissa of Fantasy Fibers and, hold on have her name here. I just had it. Um, Alicia. Alicia of, um, she's a knitwear designer. I think her, her like name, business name on Ravelry is Two Plums, something like that. Um, anyways, her name is Alicia Plummer. Um, she designed the Bibliophile sweater. Um, and the first version came out in a fingering weight yarn. And now she has version two, which is DK, and then version three, which is DK with um, measurements for um, men. So I think it's a little more broad shouldered. I don't really know. So anyways, when I saw that the DK version was coming out, I was super excited because I have a lot of DK sweater quantities. Um, I love finger and weight yarn. I love how much definition you can get out of it. I love the detail work you can do with it. Um, but in a sweater, it just takes forever to get through. Um, and that can just be a little tedious. Um, so I really wanted a DK version. Um, so super excited when that came out. And then I saw that Marissa and Alicia were going to have a knit along that they started yesterday. So I'm like, well, now's the time I got to cast on this sweater. Um, I've been wanting to cast on this sweater I have one from last summer that I still need to finish. Um, so I was going to like make myself finish that and then cast on a new one and then decided, you know what? No, I'm going to cast on what I want and I'm going to cast on this sweater. So, um, on Instagram, I gave two options. I have, um, a beautiful gray colorway. Um, that's the Hufflepuff colorway from Ruby and the yarn comb that will be for another sweater. Um, and then I had the Cliffs of Mo, I think it's pronounced Mower, Mower? I don't know. Um, by Explorer Knits from her Ireland collection from last year. Um, so I had both of these already purchased. They're already in my stash. Um, really excited to cast on both of these colorways, but I kind of gave those as the two options as far as help me pick one and got a lot of responses. Uh, so thank you for voting on those and helping me decide. The clear winner was Cliffs of Mower. So I will cast on the Ruby and the Yarn Co. Uh, yarn soon, hopefully. Um, but I am so excited to be using this yarn. So let me grab my little label. I have it right here with me on the floor. So this is the label. So Explore Knits, her Ireland collection. This is on her Rockies DK base. It's 100% superwash merino, um, no nylon. So you could use it for socks, but you would get a little more wear and tear out of it. Um, this is 274 yards, 100 grams, pretty basic. Um, so if you are not familiar with yarn weight, um, you have the very thinnest, which is like lace, and then the next one up is fingering weight, which is what I typically use for socks, um, for hats, for gloves, for any sort of like neck wear. Um, it's thin, but you can do a lot with it. The next size up after that is sport weight. Um, so that's a little thicker, but not by much. And then the next size up is DK, um, which is stands for, I want to say double knit. So there's this whole like conversion thing. So you can hold a fingering weight yarn double or hold two of them together. And it's the same as one DK. So it's a little thicker. So the sweater will go by a little faster, which is great. 
we always love that. So I'll show you the colorway. Um, I love this. It is like greenish, bluish, grayish. Um, I have it started. So let me show you a little bit of that. It's not a ton that is done. Um, I'm still working on um, kind of the back shaping and then so I'll show you. It's little. So I'm still working on the back shaping and then you join together and then you work on the round. So you work in a big tube, just like socks. Um, you keep increasing till you get to about here. And then you take off um, stitches, you put them on holders for the sleeve. And then you just keep knitting the rest of the body. And then you go back and do your sleeves and you're done. Um, so this knit along is going through until I want to say June. Um, and then there's also a book that they're reading at the same time. Um, so I didn't get the book. I have a couple other books that I need to finish first. Um, but I might jump in on the reading part a little later. Um, but I'm really loving this sweater. There's just something about a basic raglan sweater that I really enjoy. Um, I don't know if it's just cause it's just relaxing or meditative, but um, it just, it, they go with everything. You can dress them up, you can dress them down. Um, so I'm really excited to be doing this yarn in particular and this sweater. Um, I will talk about the yarn. Um, I'm using two balls of yarn, which I don't know if you can see in the video, but this one in my left hand is a little more silver and then this one in my right hand is a little more green. Um, so when you have hand dyed yarn, um, even though if it's in the same pan, it's knit, you know, dyed up on the same day by the same person, you're going to get some variations. Some colors are going to turn up a little different than others, um, which is something I really like about hand dyed yarn. Um, there's just a lot of variation because it's made by hand. It's supposed to look like that. Um, if I wanted yarn that looked exactly the same, then I would buy commercially dyed yarn, but I'm not really interested in that. So, um, because this is hand dyed yarn and you do have a little bit of color variation, you actually want to use two different balls at the same time. Um, and that way you're kind of blending the colors together as you're knitting. So you don't have these big chunks of different colors. Um, there are some knitters out there that are really good at just reading their work and making sure that their colors aren't pulling and can make adjustments. I am not one of those knitters. So I knit with at least two balls at a time um, so to make sure that I'm getting some really good blends. Um, and that way it just all looks the same. Um, so yeah, so that's the big project going on right now. So. I'm down to two projects again. Um, I do have my uh, Yarnaceous Blanket. Um, I'm doing the Habitation Throw. That is just going to be worked on in the evenings, typically when we're watching a show with the kids. That's what I'm going to be working on. Um, that's going to be a, a super long-term project. I don't have a deadline for it. I'm just going to enjoy the process. So I'm not expecting to be done with that until like December. Um, just cause it's a lot of yarn. Um, I also have a, um, cozy memories blanket that I started and that is also going to be a long-term project. Um, I kind of work on it whenever I feel like it. And so I'll work on some squares and then I'll leave it for a couple weeks and then I'll do a couple more squares. Um, and for that, I'm using all yarn from projects I've already done. Um, so all my scraps I'm trying to use up more of my scraps um, with intention instead of just giving them away or using them to like wrap up gifts or whatever. Um, trying to, to use as much of those as possible. So I'm currently going through all of the scraps that I have already have saved. Um, next, I'll go through all the scraps from projects from this year and then just kind of intentionally go th through that way. I don't know how big I'm gonna make it, we'll see. Um, and then the last kind of ongoing project, um, are my little granny squares. So I'm doing the Battenberg blanket with 
granny squares made with yarn from last year's year of socks. Um, so I saved all of those yarns separately from the rest of my scraps. So I'm making teeny little granny squares out of those. Um, so I made six of each color and now I'm bumping it up. So I have 10 of each color and I'm just going to keep going until I run out of one color. And then that's going to be the number that we're at. Um, and then I'll show you all those little granny squares to you guys. Um, so pictures of those will be up on Instagram as I kind of work on things. Um, but I won't always talk about them in our episodes here because those are worked on when I feel like it. Um, so yeah, that's our works in progress and our finished objects. As far as the rest of the things, books, um, I have been following, I want to say her name is, her name is Erica. Um, I don't remember her Instagram handle with confidence, but I will put it down at the bottom of the page. Um, so she reads a lot of books. Um, she annotates them beautifully and then she posts about them on Instagram about different books that she's reading and what she likes and what she doesn't like. Um, so I started following her a couple weeks ago and I've gotten some really good suggestions from her. So one of the books, or she did a reel. Yeah, that was it. She did a reel uh, with books that she wished she had read sooner. Uh, so one of them was Legendborn uh, by Tracy Dion. And then the follow up book is Bloodmarked. And so I read those and really enjoyed them. Um, it's a twist on the King Arthur story and um, just deals with a lot of different topics besides just King Arthur. Um, so really suggest those. Um, really enjoy them. Really love the narrator. Um, she did a beautiful job with all the accents. So definitely read those. Um, next on her list, um, I think this was also a Instagram D&D dice roll. Um, the next one on her list was uh, We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Fizal. I think that's how you say it, Hafsa Fizal. Um, I know there's a second book. I don't remember if there's a third, uh, but I've really been enjoying that one as well. Um, yeah, it's not based off of anything as far as I know, as far as like a, a fairy tale. Um, but it's this whole idea of these different people groups and they used to have magic and then they don't have magic and now they're on this quest to restore magic. Um, so I've really been enjoying that. And what's made it even more enjoyable is uh, the narrator. So there's two narrators um, and they both narrated the Scorpio races by Maggie Steve Otter. Um, they narrated that book together as well. So it's kind of nice to be kind of with like familiar friends. So I've listened to the hunger, not the hunger games, um, the Scorpio races every year for the last six years. Um, I read it at least once a year. And so I'm very, you know, their voices are just very familiar. Um, so to hear them in this book, has been really nice. Um, so I got really excited when I started hearing their voices. Um, so definitely suggest that one, uh, as well. Um, for both of those, I don't remember there being a ton of content that needed kind of, um, warnings. Um, with the first book, The Legendborn and Bloodmark, there is a bit of language. Um, so just be aware of that, but I wouldn't say there was anything, um, over the top. And then still working through A Ballad of Snakes and Songbirds by Suzanne Collins. Um, I just started part three, so I'm like trucking along, um. I should be done with it sooner rather than later. But I mean, there have been times where I have like audibly gasped. Um, and usually one of the kids will ask me like, what's happening? I was like, I don't even know. I gotta keep reading. Um, so really nice to, to read an actual book um, and just kind of be still, have my hands be still and just enjoy that again. Um, so yeah, for shows, there's a little bird outside the window. Um, for shows, I. I got through quite a few. So I finished uh, You, season four. That was a super trip. Um, if you like serial killers, stalkers, psycho, like mysteries, psycho thrillers, definitely watch it. A lot of language, definitely some adult content, um, but it was really good. Um, I kind of hope they just stop there. I don't, I hope they don't do another one. 
Um, I feel like they ended the story well and they just need to leave it be. Um, so yeah, definitely enjoyed that. Um, I watched The Last of Us on HBO. Um, that was crazy. So I haven't played the video game. I'm not a big video game player. Um, so I didn't have any background context as far as the storyline or who these characters were. Um, but I love Pedro Pascal and I love Bella Ramsey. Um, I saw them both in <sighs> Game of Thrones. Um, and then I've seen some of Pedro Pascal's other work. Uh, so I was really excited to see them. I've seen them in interviews and really enjoyed their dynamic together off screen. So I wanted to see the on screen and it was really good. Um, so yeah, definitely hit a couple nerves as far as like social issues that are happening. Um, but they did a really good job with that. Um, so yeah, hope that they have a second season soon. Um, what else? Oh, I started Succession on HBO. Um, I'm only an episode in, so I don't have a ton of feedback on it. Um, for sure, there's a lot of language, but it's HBO, so I can only imagine what else is coming. Um, so yeah, if you've seen that one, let me know what you think about it. Um, jury's still out for me. So those are the shows. Um, some other news, I got my quarter one stats. So in this fancy little red notebook. Um, I have been writing down all the projects that I've been doing, projects by month as far as finishing those out. And then I have my quarter page. Let me find it here. So here's the page that I did for my quarter one. And I actually went through and I wrote down all of my quarter one projects. Um, I really struggle with feeling that I don't make enough or that I'm not, yeah, just that like production angst. Um, so actually writing everything down every month and then writing it down as like the first quarter showed like, oh no, I've done quite a bit. Um, I have finished 10 pairs of socks, a shawl and what was the other thing? And a cowl in the first three months of the year. Um, 12 projects is a lot of projects. Um, I always set up a, a like a yearly goal through Ravelry and I think I did 40 projects this year as far as my goal and like I'm a quarter of the way there. Um, more than that. So so that was just kind of a nice like check-in and reminder of like, oh no, I'm, I'm getting quite a bit done. Uh, the stash is slowly getting smaller. Um, so yeah, so that was nice to just kind of like check in and see, oh, things are getting made and enjoyed and um, I'm doing all right. So there's that. And then last bit of news is our sock swap. So um, I've talked about it a couple episodes before that uh, I'm gonna be hosting a sock swap uh, for the summer. So um, I've decided to call it the Fiber Friends Sock Swap. Um, in the area that I live in, there aren't any knit groups, or at least none that I know of or that are close to me. So I don't have like a knitting community that's in person. Um, I have a couple friends who knit, but we don't like it together. So a lot of my fiber friends are all online that I've met either through social media or through sock swaps, um, or yarn swaps. So the whole idea is you fill out a form that I'll have up, um, in a couple weeks and you just answer a bunch of questions you know obviously your name if you're on instagram or ravelry your email um preferences as far as like sock yarn um, and then other just questions about you what do you like to do what are your hobbies outside of crafting um what are you looking forward to this summer and then after about oh, two weeks of having that open i'll close it and then I'll match everyone up with one partner. And then you get to know your partner as much or as little as you both feel comfortable with. And then you make each other a care package. Um, the requirement is one 100 grand skein of sock yarn. Um, but I know a lot of people like to add a couple of things. I always like to add um, a couple of things. It doesn't have to be a ton of money. Um, but I just, I, I enjoy getting stuff in the mail. I'm sure lots of other people like getting packages. Um, so I like to be intentional with that. 
And then you have some new yarn and you have a new fiber friend and we get ready for summer. So um, I'm going to be hosting that again. So I did a little one last year. We're going to do, do it again this year. So registration begins May 1st and is open through the 12th. And then I will send out your partner emails on May 15th. So it gives me a couple days to get all the matches done, um, make sure I didn't miss anybody, and then send out that email. Um, and then your kind of due date to mail would be June 1st. So it's a quick turnaround. Um, I just, you know, wanna make sure people get stuff in the mail that it doesn't take forever for the mail to just get places. So that is the plan. So keep an eye out. Um, as far as sock swaps, have you ever done a sock swap? Sock swap. Um, what do you enjoy about them? What are questions that you wish would be on, like those questionnaires that you fill out? Um, are you planning on joining us? Um, those will be up live and then I'll do kind of a and a video separate from our regular podcast uh, with some more information on that as well. So keep an eye out for those. So that's our episode 20, kind of a mix of wrapping up March, beginning April, mid-April. Um, we'll be back for wrap up of April, beginning of May, um, and then definitely keep an eye out for fiber friend sock swap information coming soon. So have a great day. Um, so proud of your work. Find, uh, what is it? Oh yeah. Find ways to be kind and I will see you guys in May.